Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin. This is Do It For Bruce. Here we are back again in CK3 with the Asian Expansion mod. I've gone ahead and set up all the du jour empires to see who will be the most powerful empire on the map. I've also given each empire one culture and one faith, you know, to help the AI cope with all the responsibilities I've thrust upon them. With that explanation out of the way, let's talk about the predictions I have for this time lapse. I don't expect much from these empires, but I do expect a lot of border gore. My top two picks for this most successful are the Byzantine Empire in the West and the Tang Empire in the East. When it comes to faith, I think the most prolific will be a Muslim one, possibly Ashari or Mulwadi. Finally, it's going to be a toss up between Arabic and Iranian as the top languages, court languages. And with that, let's get to the time lapse. I'll see you after that. Alrighty, here we are, 586 years in the future, and things are a lot less camped than I would let them to be. Well, I did expect Borgor, so what am I saying? Uh, we did have a nice little Mongol uh, expansion. They didn't make it, they made it pretty far, but they just mostly messed up all the empires, the Jura empires in this region. So the East, we didn't really get an opportunity to see how this went down over here, just because unfortunately due to camera angle you can only capture so much information uh, so we had to leave out certain parts of the map that are left but let us look around we see a lot of things uh, we see that France has fallen their empire has fallen as a Cornish Wadi uh, Scandinavia I felt like they were doing pretty well and then they finally fell apart uh, Vladimir Kingdom is a thing i thought the byzantines were out for the count especially when uh sicily broke free that was i was definitely thinking oh man they're done for but then uh here we are they're still we're they're still kicking in eight, 586 years they've had 
the same family. No deviations in power whatsoever. That is uh, pretty impressive. And then what about the Tang over here? Looks like they got taken over eventually by some other family. The biggest surprise for me personally is the fact that the Orthodox have become the supreme uh, Christian religion. With, even though the Pope still still is in existence, Catholicism has taken a back step, uh, back seat, even though the Pope is still making 91 gold a month. It looks like one of the tops will be, oh, surprisingly love, it's Orthodox. But they've supplanted them, like I said, they supplanted the Catholics. Uh, and then there's Ashari, then this uh, Buddhist religion, and then Catholicism. Uh, we also saw not a reformation of Asatru, but Vindalis has actually been restored. But that makes sense because the Baltic Empire owned al almost all the all their holy sites. So it would have been silly if they couldn't have made it happen. Any divergence, any changes, anything worth uh, mentioning? Uh, we, it's pretty standard. I, obviously, we don't know what how these um, these kingdoms as much over here. At least I'm not that familiar with them. Uh, and then let's look at the empires as a whole. Looks like the Tang gained more foothold there. Parthria, a little more in here. Uh, looks like the Byzantines just expanded a little bit. Holy Roman Empire chomped a little of the Western Slavs. Scandinavia, not. I don't think they've moved that much. Uh, not really. Uh, same with the Ar Arabic Empire. Not a lot of movement, to be honest, other than the Taratari. Uh, they they got some movement. And then let's look at culture. They, like I said in the intro, everybody had a homogenous culture, so it will be interesting to see what has transpired. Like this was all Andalus, and now they have Franco-Portuguese, uh, which is wild. And then we have French. We've got some Cornish. I know it's uh, probably blasphemous that I did that, but it's it's done. Scandinavia to the Swedish just because I didn't want to give them Norse, and then they all break up into different pieces. Uh, let's see. Lots of movement here. Saxony, not really Upper Saxony. Cooler Saxony, just way upper. I'm the Upper Saxony. Greek, we did see some movement, only probably because the empire fell apart a couple times, but then got back together. Usually you don't see any movement when it comes to the Greeks. Uh, Paraso Masharik. Mongol, pretty strong. Strong out here. Han, pretty strong. Bodpa, pretty strong. Uh, Yamamoto. Like I always say, it seems like some people will uh, increase their traditions, but some people just stay with their classic like couple. They don't, they aren't able to get the enough prestige to really make a difference, uh, which is unfortunate because you'd, you'd hope the AI would use the mechanics a little bit better, but that's just how that uh, situation goes. Language is next. Uh, I said Arabic would be one of the dominant ones, and I or Iranian would be the toss up. Uh, it looks like Iranian, just from pure landmass, it looks like they have a lot, but I wouldn't count Greek out either. Uh, it's hard to tell because this value doesn't give us an, uh, like, this isn't based on who's got the best, uh, the most land. But actually, Magdi has a pretty good showing. Uh, I will leave it up to your discretion on making that decision. Uh, let's look at development before we say goodbye. Uh, not a lot of development movement as usual, only the hotspots are the hotspots. This mod has definitely come a long way since I last reviewed it, last looked at it, last played a time lapse in it, a lot more changes to the culture. Culture as well as religion has been updated a lot more. There's a lot more polish to it now. Definitely worth checking out if you're interested in this extended map. I think that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to tell a friend about this content because uh, the more people know about it, the more we can all enjoy it together. So thank you so much, as always, and have a good rest of your day. Ciao.